Hi everybody, in this Code It Quick, I'm going to explain autoencoders, the most simple one, and use it for dimensionality reduction on an example. So say we have the MNIST handwritten digits, and this is the digit 5. Well, that's represented by a pixel array of 28 by 28 pixels. We can flatten this and then convert it into a feature vector of 784 components. So this is just whatever it was before, we convert it into a vector, and then here we do the encode step in the autoencoder, which is where we actually reduce the number of dimensions to n. So the whole point of doing this is just to reduce dimensions to this middle layer here of this neural network. Except to actually train the autoencoder, it is a model, and so we need to do the decode step where we convert it back into a 784 dimensional vector and we reshape it back into itself. And so when we're training the model, we actually pass the input and the output as the exact same thing. So that's able to map the input into this middle end dimensional vector, that is the dimensionality reduction, that's why we want it, but to train the model we also do this to code. Autoencoders could be linear or nonlinear. We made the most simple one, which is assuming everything here is a linear activation, and so we don't have any hidden layers with nonlinear activation functions, and so this is very similar to the PCA algorithm. But you're free to mess around with the network as long as you have the similar structure of encoding, some middle layer, and then decoding. We're now going to use TensorFlow to make nearly this exact network and show on an example how it works. Here is just loading the MNIST dataset where we have our training array of 60,000 28 by 28 images, our 60,000 labels, and our test information of 10,000 images with 10,000 labels. We're now going to do some imports from TensorFlow and Keras. Importing TensorFlow as TF, get from TensorFlow Keras models the model, Keras layers, we need reshape, flatten, dense, and lambda for our example, and the loss function that we need is the mean squared error. Don't be scared when I paste a bunch of code here, I'm going to explain all the important parts of it. So I pasted this because it's not too important of all the specifics here. I'm just going to point out the particular pieces. In the init function, we have a Latin dimension, which we set equal to 2. That's that same thing as n here, and it's very important to know the number of dimensions you're going to convert it into. And then we have the encoder and the decoder. And so in the encoder step, that is going to be the beginning of the network. And so we're gonna just flatten it and then call dense with linear activation of convert that into the number specified by the Latin dim. That is what we're going to call. We'll call self.encoder or autoencoder.encoder when we want to actually do the dimensionality reduction. We also need the self.decoder for training the model. And so that is going to come after the encoder step and it's going to be whatever the dimension was to begin with. And so that is the flattened version of 28 by 28, which is 784. And then we reshape it properly back into 2828. And so we specify down below with call. And what that does is it makes the encoded and then the decoded, and then it returns decoded. So to use this model, we will first make an actual instantiation of it. And so we'll make autoencoder equal to calling autoencoder. And then after that, we do autoencoder.compile with set the optimizer equal to probably atom and the loss definitely equal to mean squared error. And now we need to fit the model. And to do that, we simply call autoencoder.fit. And then we pass the input and the output as the exact same thing, which is both the input. And although it might not be totally necessary, generally what we do after flatten is we apply a lambda function where we divide each of these by 255 or whatever preprocessing normally makes sense for your problem. When fitting the model, if you don't see the loss go down and kind of balance out at some point, then you probably did something wrong. Now the main point of our encoder is to actually get encoded data. And we do that by doing encoded train is equal to autoencoder.encoder, so that encodes the encoder piece. We pass that to our training examples, and then we do that to NumPy. So after that, we can ask the shape, and we'll see it is a 60,000, that's the number of training examples, by two important and encoded or dimensionality reduced 60,000 examples. I picked two on purpose because then we're actually able to graph the data. And so using this plotly code, we can go ahead and show this data on its x and y axis, which is simply its first column and its second column. We can see from the graph that the dimensionality reduction effectively produced these clusters. And so that means that these two components are very strong in predicting what type of picture this actually is. So if we were to make a model that was trying to predict what handwritten digit each was, we could actually put it through the autoencoder or dimensionality reduction first. And so we'll make a k-nearest neighbors model, don't worry too much about this code, and we could fit the classifier by calling the fit method of this with the autoencoded data, so that's encoded train and the train labels, 
train y, and then we can see how well the model performs with KNN classifier dot score, and then we pass it in the encoded test input. So that would be the same thing as above. Instead of getting encoded train here, we're actually going to get encoded test. We will just convert this to test. And then we can pass it in coded test as well as test y. We see that we only got 30%, and so clearly just two dimensions is not enough. We're going to need to encode this into maybe, say, a 10 dimension vector. And so we'll change the above to make the Latin dim of this 10. After running all of the code above except the graph, because we're unable to graph the data anymore, we get a 93% accuracy, which is much better. Now I have all the code for this down below, as well as a link to the documentation, and I will see you in the next video.